And Namdi Abasi is a senior analyst for Nigeria at the International Crisis Group. He joins us now live from Orlando in the U.S. state of Florida. Welcome to Al Jazeera. Thanks very much for speaking uh, to us. Why are we seeing this escalating violence there in Nigeria? Well, I, I, wish, uh, I wish we knew all the, all the reasons for this, but we could definitely point to a number of factors. I mean, first of all, the, the government hasn't demonstrated sufficient political will in dealing with this issue. Um, secondly, you could say the military has been quite deficient in several regards. It's been short of the intelligence it needs to fight. It has been short of um, training and men and equipment. And it's also low in morale, um, partly because of the lack of political will at the level of the government. And you could also say that the Boko Haram has grown stronger in the last one year. It's got more fighters. It has adapted to new tactics. Um, it has been able to hold on to territory. And um, for all of these reasons, the situation is getting cer certainly um, worse than it was um, a year ago. Nigeria once had uh, Africa's strongest army, didn't it? Uh, yet now it can't stop Boko Haram. You mentioned a few factors there. What's happened? Yes, this is still you know, quite baffling to most Nigerians as well as to analysts from outside. It certainly had a strong and, and, and large army, but over the years it seems to have been degraded by uh, poor administration during the military, military, many years of military rule, poor maintenance of equipment, corruption in, in uh, defense funding, and um, a clear underestimation of the threat and preparation for this kind of uh, security challenge. Now, you also talked about uh, the government. Uh, why isn't there the political will to try and restore stability there? Well, first of all, there's a... And across the board, I mean, a whole of government lack of political will in dealing with a whole lot of issues, whether we talk about education or about health or about housing, infrastructure, just about anything, there is uh, a deficit of will in dealing with the many issues affecting the country. But uh, in relation to the Boko Haram issue specifically, it's also been affected by the fact that the, there were lots of conspiracy theories about this. and. Um, Initially, the government, and perhaps still up to, up to this time, a great deal of people in government still thought of this as um, uh, a political conspiracy against the Jonathan administration rather than what it really is, which is a, a, a threat to the security of the country. And as long as it was you know, uh, misunderstood as a, security th I mean, a political threat against the government, the government, of course, responded you know, to it within that context and did not quite rise and has not quite risen up till now to the, the realization that this is a real challenge to the stability and security and unity of the country that needs to be dealt with in a much more effective and forceful way. Sir, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. Namdi Abasi is a senior analyst for Nigeria at the International Crisis Group. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sunday. We're about to go live in less than 30 minutes, 4 o'clock central at Infowars.com forward slash show and on radio stations and some cable stations across the country with, with the biggest news yet of the Trump administration. I have intel from inside the White House. I have intel from the Pentagon. Uh, I have intel from a lot of sources, and I've got Roger Stone coming on, who I haven't talked to yet today, but he agreed to come on via text so I can bounce this intel off of him. We also have Mike Cernovich coming on. He's got his own intel. Everybody knows he broke the big Susan Rice news, and they had to admit he's the guy that had that leak. <clears throat> he's got more leaks. Uh, and, I, and I know Stone has some of his own big leaks concerning Kushner and what he's leaking to the liberal media. Now even the Daily Beast and Time Magazine say that Kushner and Trump's daughter have basically had a Democratic coup at the White House. But that's a whole separate deal we're covering coming up in less than 30 minutes. That'll be about 27 minutes from now, Infowars.com forward slash show. Now, what I'm about to tell you is hiding in plain view. But I made my phone calls to Pentagon sources and others, and they said, absolutely. And they said, we can't talk to you now, and you know what that means. And I said, that means it's a sure deal, full invasion of Syria. And they said, wow, you're a smart guy. As a joke, everybody knows. Once they don't talk, that means it's on. Hiding in plain view, more than 3,000 U.S. Special Forces are in Syria and Iraq alone. And again, Syria and Iraq border each other. And there's that whole area where ISIS slash Al-Qaeda al nusra are. So you've got the Mediterranean, you've got Syria, you've got Iraq. Here's where the main battles are going on. 
uh, in the West, and then you got the larger battles going on in the East between the quote reg uh, regular rebels uh, and the main Syrian forces. But getting past the geopolitical here, the U.S. forces were supposedly put in when Trump got in office uh, 80 days ago, or a little more than two months ago. I guess two months and 20 days. They were put in to reportedly push out Al Qaeda, ISIS, cut out their supply lines right through the country up to the north, where they were then invading back down to the south along the Mediterranean. They've pushed them all the way to the edge of Iraq right now. Tens of thousands of U.S. troops reportedly being ready, but thousands more already being put in of regular army. They've got a Marine Expeditionary Force with heavy artillery that can go out five, six, seven miles, ready to pound Damascus if need be, or even go to war with the Russians. All sorts of anti-aircraft missiles and batteries have been brought in. That's why John McCain is so happy on CNN, saying Rand Paul doesn't even matter. Ha, ha, ha. We don't have to go to Congress. This is huge. Now, on another subject, Trump has told aides that he doesn't intend to have a no-fly zone. He doesn't intend to have a wider war. He believes this is strength in the face of Assad, so that when the four-year deal our militaries had, when they went against Obama, remember, and it wouldn't be Al-Qaeda's Air Force, they told Assad, we'll push Al-Qaeda and ISIS out with Russia, but then you've got to have some type of system to step down and transition out of power. And the word is Assad recently said, I'm not going to step down. And the Russians said, we have no comment. Okay, now this happened a few weeks ago. So now McMaster's, the uh, national security advisor, super uh, right-wing neocon general, very effective, but, 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 but a very neocon, very pro-Pax Americana war, he has publicly told Congress and others that he wants to take out ISIS and Assad simultaneously. Total nation building, the opposite of what Trump said, when it was Hillary and Obama and the globalist and the neocons, John Kerry, all of them, that started this thing six years ago by sending in the jihadi forces, the ISIS, uh, Al-Qaeda forces, into Syria to overthrow it. Our government backed them. The Council on Foreign Relations admitted that. Our military found his conscience and said no to this four years ago. And, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dempsey, went and said no to Obama. And all that stuff happened that we broke first on air. So listen, I want to be clear. I support President Trump and cutting taxes and securing the borders and leaving the Second Amendment alone and cutting UN funding by half and restoring our republic and three trillion in the stock market and 300 billion in jobs and the best small business numbers. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's America. But what does it matter if it's America now taking over the whole global empire and, and you know, just kind of taking it from the EU and then the, and then the US running it and then the empire doesn't put in good secular governments that actually help people and send women to college it's neocons allied with Saudi Arabia in global domination. Al-Qaeda is celebrating this. That's what's disgusting. I'll tell you, my listeners are 80% against this. Okay? I don't want what the left's celebrating and the big foundations are celebrating breaking all of Trump's middle class, blue collar, hardworking, pro-jobs, Americana folks that aren't left or right that supported him breaking them away from him with this so that then he falls completely to the globalist and then goes with their agenda completely. You understand, we're in a fight now, like two dogs in a tug of war, for the soul of this country. We know Trump's better than Hillary, but we know he started to slide sideways with that health bill, better than Obamacare, but not much, and now with this. So we have to be more active lobbying Trump, more active with our congressmen and the Freedom Caucus that's so key, more active with the good state legislators and the 900 patriots that got elected to, 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 to state houses and all the new Republican governors that aren't compromising. That's why it really, three things make me really start to worry about Trump. The bad health bill, then he attacked the Freedom Caucus two weeks ago as if they were the enemy, and then now he's sliding on his promises with Syria. If he just did this to look strong to the Chinese, and he just did this because the Russians agreed to get rid of the chemical weapons four years ago in that agreement, and they hadn't, and he was blowing them up on, you know, on the spot, as the agreement said, if he said that, fine. But clearly, they're not going to attack with chemical weapons when they're winning the war and the U.S. is about to push ISIS out. Why the hell would they do that when the week before, 10 days ago, Tillerson, Secretary of State, said Assad might be able to stay? Assad might be able to stay. Oh, God, let me launch some chemical weapons and make sure the red line gets passed and they turn against me. The American people, at least a large segment of them, of every race, color, and creed, are educated about this now. I'm not going to just throw Trump under the bus and throw it all out and all of our successes against political correctness and the New World Order and America, not globalism, just because this happens. 
But you've got a carrier task force group pulling up in the South China Sea. you got North Korea threatening nuclear war against all these places. Uh, Japan. And, of course, uh, Seoul, South Korea. That's an open group with China taking over the South China Sea, threatening the world. That's a real place where if Trump said, we've got defense agreements, we've got trade agreements, you better not expand and seize these sea lanes. I would say that's a great thing to stand up against with massive trade war, massive sanctions, you name it. And militarily, if need be, we've got to be strong. But to go into Syria when the globalists started it and tried to overthrow that sovereign country to put a bunch of Al-Qaeda dirtbags in charge who murder Christians by the hundreds of thousands is a load of crap. The globalists want to sow division and collapse, not just here, but in Russia and in the Middle East. They made a failed state in, 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 in Libya. They're making failed states in Syria. They overthrew our allies in Egypt and put Muslim Brotherhood crap asses in. And, 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 and to see that global sick strategy is, uh, being, being now begin to be picked up by Trump is BS, and he needs to hear from we, the American people, not just a bunch of bitching about, oh, he sold us out. He's surrounded. They're ignoring his orders. The whole government's in rebellion against him. And the neocons are running it with the Democrats, telling him capitulate to their agenda and they'll let him stay in office. Well, he should know this. They want to destroy you because of the image of nationalism you created. And they're going to get you to carry out their will to drive away your support. And as soon as your support base is gone, they are going to throw you to the dogs and have their cake and eat it too. So Donald John Trump, don't be a dumbass. And listeners of mine and viewers, don't be dumbasses either and just want to say, you're losers, oh, we got screwed again. We've already made massive gains. Globalism is in trouble everywhere. The fact that it's unelected is coming out. The fact that it's world government's coming out. So we need to press the attack and tell Trump and everybody else, listen, we didn't elect your daughter as president. We didn't elect Jared Kushner as president. We elected you because of people like Stephen Bannon and what you stood for and the first 70 days where you delivered on everything. Now the last 10 days or everything, you're crapping all over that in the name of strength. And all I know is you don't want McMasters and others who've got a massive ground force already on the ground to move this into a full war in the Middle East. Now that's what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen. I love my children, and I love this planet, and I love God. We should all be praying for peace, because this is an incredible betrayal. I want to tell Trump one more thing. Everybody hated Obama. Everybody hated George W., who got installed. The fact that people loved you and you spoke out against globalism, if you turn on them, they're going to hate you like a woman scorned. So Donald Trump... Don't think you're going to slick your way out of this one if you're starting to go sideways. Now, if you know what you're doing and we don't understand what's happening, that's fine. It's very encouraging to hear at the White House meetings, you're saying no fly zones are off the table. We're not going to war with Syria. But the neocons and their people are signaling everywhere that's what's happening. And they're all over the news saying Russia was behind the chemical attack now. And John McCain says they're the real enemy and we need to go to war with them. And we need to go to war in Ukraine when, again, George Soros and the globalists started that again. I'm not on Russia's side. I'm on the side of my memory. I know what happened. I'm informed. We're live in 15 minutes at Infowars.com. Come over here. Wilson doing a great job. We're live, I guess it's about 17, 18 minutes at Infowars.com forward slash show. History's happening. And if the people wake up like we did four years ago, five years ago, and say no to what happened in Syria, we can't avoid another world war. We just passed the 100 year anniversary of World War I and the United States being involved in that, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got more people up there holding up their images of little dead kids. You notice, oh, here's the final statement. Do you see any dead kids uh, from the photos uh, in Stockholm, Sweden, with the guy running over a bunch of people and killing them? No. you see any images of dead people with the ISIS bombings of churches in e uh, Egypt this week? Hell no. You didn't see any of that, did you? Because they don't want you to care about that because they're allied with ISIS and Saudi Arabia. But you saw the kids, of the, the photos of the nerve gas kids and the videos, didn't you? If we show that kind of stuff any other time, they block our YouTube channels, they take us off cable TV. But the establishment, they're able to show you the image of the little kids when they want to wave the bloody shirt and manipulate you. This is so fake, it makes my head spin. We're live again. In about 15 minutes, Infowars.com forward slash show. Spread this video. Spread these links because we're in a fight for the heart and soul of this country. Globalism is imploding worldwide. And as usual, the, un the, the unelected authoritarian system of planetary corporatism that calls itself globalism, this crony capitalist system that's anti-free market, is, is using war again to try to claw back out of the defeat they're having at the hands of the people. We're fighting for this republic, and we've only begun to fight. And for anybody that ever thinks... Just because Trump calls me or you know, all this BS that I wouldn't turn on him in a minute 
If he starts screwing with the American people, you're full of crap. Infowars.com forward slash shove.